Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me once again on the Infertility Channel. It's the holiday season. There's a lot of baking, lots of nuts around. And uh, just as the Greeks have worry beads or the Chinese have stress balls, I have stress walnuts. And we try to use uh, Neville here to do this, but he only eats the nuts. They, uh... <laughs> oh, ow, I just jammed my finger. Okay, forget Neville. Long story short, it's a tough time of the year for infertile couples. So you're going to be going to a lot of parties and, and a lot of awkward questions. And I've had actually a number of people uh, one, two, three, four, five people. And I'm going to just give one of their questions because they're all pretty much the same. I have several friends who have struggled for years to get pregnant. Some of them have even done IVF. Is avoiding conversations about kids and pregnancy the right thing to do? I'd like to tell you a personal story. Many years ago, my wife called me immediately following her wedding shower. She was so excited telling me about her friends and all the laughter and the delicacies and the great gifts she got but she wanted to tell me especially about one gift. It was the gift from my precious, well-intentioned Italian mother. My mother had bought her for her wedding shower, baby booties, as well as an outfit for a baby boy, three months and then six months and then nine months and 12 months. She had the whole year planned out and she had hugged my wife to be and she said, honey, next year, next Christmas, we're gonna have a grandbaby, we're gonna have a little boy. So my wife called me and told me about this and she said, is this a tradition in your family? Doesn't your family get that there's the wedding first and then the baby later? And I said, yeah, we get it, but we just like babies. It turns out it was 14 years later when we broke out those baby booties, the same baby booties, and we put those on our son who was born through IVF. So I wanna go back to these questions. Not only do I think I have an answer from a professional point of view, but also from a personal point of view. The holidays are supposed to be the most joyous days of the year. A time filled with celebrations and family get together and the best of all possible foods and music and religious celebrations. But you know, the hopes and fears of all the years can be dealt a death blow by a single misinformed question like, when are you two gonna have a baby? Or are you still trying to have a baby? Or I thought we'd have a baby by now, where is he? that kills the holidays. So I'd like to give you seven tips today, seven ways to help you get through the next few weeks. Number one, be in touch with your feelings. It is okay to tell your family and dearest friends what you're going through. It's okay to cry. Let them help you. Let them pray for you. Let them meditate and let them be your energy. Let them be your cheerleaders. It's okay. Dignify your feelings. Number two, simplify. You don't have to be under any obligation to satisfy other people's needs for you. There are certain expectations set for all of us during the holidays. You don't have to fulfill them. Just go to the things you want to go to and skip the things you don't. Number three, maintain boundaries. If you're at the party and somebody intrudes into your space, just spill your punch on them or excuse yourself and go to the bathroom. Uh, really what I'm trying to say here is people have no right to know the most intimate details of your lives. Just keep that private, maintain your boundaries. Number four, remember the reason for the season. This is a season of joy. It's also a season of giving. So if you can focus on the less fortunate, focus on their stories, focus on their pain, it will help you. I guarantee you, it will help you to get through this time. Number five, find some new friends. Socialize with people in your support group or socialize with childless couples at your synagogue or church. Go on a ski trip or go on a cruise. You don't have to be around all those little kids at the various parties. You don't have to see all those pregnant bellies around the Christmas table. Number six, take time for yourself. Take 15, 30, 60 minutes a day in yoga or meditation or prayer. Take a walk, exercise, do something, get away from it all. But just take some time for yourself, distance yourself from all of those people who are annoying you. So I do want you to take time alone for yourself, but don't completely divorce yourself from all activities and family and friends. Don't isolate yourself. Go to the religious ceremonies, go to tree lighting events, go to concerts, go to plays. Be part of things, but keep your boundaries. If you feel like you're way too isolated and you're not connecting anymore, please talk to a medical professional. Number seven, 
All of the festivities will soon end. So will all of those high carb, high cholesterol foods. It's time to get back to the gym. It's time to make a plan. So early in January, I want you to go to your reproductive medicine specialist and chart out your path for the new year. Finally, what do you do with Aunt Mildred when she comes up and says, honey, are you still trying to have a baby? Just say, Aunt Mildred, trust me, you will be the first to know when we need baby booties. Thanks so very much for joining me. Have a great and safe holiday season. I look forward to seeing you back here next week on the Infertility Channel. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.